This is simple harmonic motion where you have a spring and a mass that's probably going to oscillate up and down. So a few terms before we go on to the question is you must know these things in simple harmonic. What is acceleration? What is displacement? And what is velocity? Especially these three things are so important. So displacement firstly is a distance from equilibrium position. So maybe this one, you already pull it down a certain distance from equilibrium position. So this one, we call this equilibrium position. But then now I've pulled it down. So you have a certain, what we call displacement. Let's say I take from reference to center of the box. So this is a displacement. And if I want to call downwards negative, sure, I put downwards negative so, or positive also can. Displacement from equilibrium. But there's also acceleration. So where is the force? What is the force on the mass? Got to remember that the spring is trying to... Ooh, this is very big. The spring is trying to pull the block upwards because the spring is now stretched. So the spring exerts a force on the block. That will cause the block to accelerate upwards. Here you already can see something interesting. You displace downwards means you accelerate up. A and X are always in opposite directions. And that brings us to this first graph. So you have a displacement acceleration graph A and X. What are we supposed to do? Uh? State what is meant by displacement of the, of the mass. Oh, definitions first. Okay, we just kind of define it just now. So you can say that displacement is a certain distance from... I guess you want to be specific, you will say equilibrium position of a spring. So let's say, let's call it equilibrium position. Or sometimes you may see certain textbooks or math schemes talk about a reference point. I mean, you need to have a reference point from somewhere. Equilibrium is my choice here. Distance from equilibrium in a given direction. Either downwards or upwards, whichever one. The direction matters. That's why I'm mentioning that here. So this is just one mark for this question. I think this is B1. Yeah, it's B1. Okay, moving on. Suggest how the figure shows the mass is not doing simple harmonic motion. So when anything moves, how do you know simple harmonic or not? You check whether it obeys this law or not. A equals to negative omega square x or the simplified version is A proportional to x. This A proportional to x means it must be a straight line through origin, no intercept. Proportional ma straight line through origin. Symmetrical on both sides. So let's go look at the figure again. Is there a problem with this figure? Is it straight? Looks pretty straight. Passes through origin. Looks okay. Uh, but oh, oh. You see here, here's a certain problem in this area. It's not straight line. This is a section where the, the spring, I think, either is overstretch or something but it's not obeying simple harmonic motion anymore therefore not simple harmonic motion i mean they you kind of explain that now so we have to say okay so what was the problem that just now we encounter oh not straight line so you say look the line of graph or the graph is not straight in other words when you have a straight line now uh, it means your gradient, no matter whether you take the gradient here or you take the gradient here, the gradient should be constant. Now. So you can either talk about that or the gradient. Or you can talk about the line or you can talk about gradient is not constant. Also can. Gradient suddenly change when you go to the bottom part. This one is a one mark question also. So it's just one mark if you know the conditions for simple harmonic motion. Then we go on to analyze the graph a little bit more. Find the uh, amplitude. Uh, amplitude can be changed. Find the maximum amplitude for when the oscillations are simple harmonic. Oh, so you must be very careful you don't go into the curvy region. So how far can you go? Let's look. I mean, this side doesn't really tell us how far we can go because it's straight all the way. But down here, you might be careful a little bit. So I think I would not go beyond this point. This is the furthest I can allow myself to go up to. So maybe up to this dotted line the spring or the mass will oscillate with simple harmonic motion. Beyond that, cannot. So what is this? Uh? This looks like 0 0.9 cm. So maybe the maximum amplitude is up to 0 0.9 only. So we can write that down. 0 0.9. Ooh, 2SF, be careful. So 0 0.90. 0. 
the mark scheme actually gives a whole range of values that are okay if you put somewhere between 0 0.85 to 0 0.9. It's fine. Okay. Let's do some calculations. For the simple harmonic motion, use figure 4.2 to, de to determine the frequency of the oscillations. The mother equation of simple harmonic motion is A equals to negative omega square x. Do you know why I use this graph? Because I want to use this equation is because the graph will tell me information about A and x. And I want to find frequency. The only way I can involve frequency inside here is omega equals to 2 pi f. And that goes inside this thing. Ah, so let's expand a little bit. So maybe I have a equals to negative 2 pi f squared times x. So I just need to pick some point, right? Choose some point from the graph. Okay, so let's go up and choose a point so we can plug in values. Well, why not I use the maximum amplitude? Can I? Let's try and see. So this point which I choose since I already found some information might as well. What is this? 1, 2. So negative 1.2. So this point that I'm going to choose, which is the largest amplitude, will be 0 0.9 cm, comma, negative 1.2 meters per second, right? Yeah. Acceleration is meters per second. Right? So we're going to plug these points into our equation right now. 0 0.9 and negative 1.2. Acceleration, negative 1.2. Actually, the negative doesn't matter, lah, but okay, lah, okay, lah, we include negative for, for convention's sake. And we have negative 2 pi frequency we're trying to find. X is going to be our 0 0.90 cm. Use this press calculator, we should get a value of F equals to 1.8 hertz over here. So, I guess that's the answer. So, 1.8. So, this one is a Three marks question. Well, first one comes if you knew the equation for a simple harmonic motion. Second mark comes if you know how to substitute some values into the point. And lastly, if you got the final answer correct. So that's A1. Now the final section. Oh, it's a graph. Graphs can be really hard or really easy depending on how familiar or how comfy you are with graphs. Let's read the instructions first. All right. Maximum speed when it's oscillating is V0. Okay, kind of normal. Show the variation of displacement with velocity. How do you even start? Okay, okay. Well, whenever you're drawing graphs, whether for AS or A2, whichever one, first step is look at the axis really carefully. V against X. Can you think of an equation somewhere where it relates V equals to something, 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 and there's X inside there? For simple harmonic motion, there is an equation on the very first page on every question booklet. Make sure you know how to find it and how it looks like. So generally, the equation looks like this. Lah. Omega, okay, lah, there's a plus minus. Square root, amplitude, square, minus x squared. Amplitude, lah, sometimes also written as x naught, the largest initial displacement. So it depends on which one you look at you might have a different idea of how the equation looks like. But how do we use the equation? Hang on first. Let's plot the points, okay? So maximum speed at maximum amplitude. This tells me that the graph should pass by these points. Okay? Uh, let's write down the, uh, uh, some points here. So if I have a spring that looks like this, if it is at the largest amplitude, equilibrium is here. Uh, here is maximum amplitude. So this is equilibrium when you have a displacement x naught here displacement is zero at this point the sp the object is furthest away from equilibrium and it is going to stop moving eventually so at this furthest position velocity is zero so that's the first thing you do is at this first furthest position your graph should be here and also here furthest away zero ma Second scenario, okay, let's say your spring has returned, uh, yeah. returned to equilibrium position and it's on the way up, still moving up, at x0 equilibrium position, is the velocity maximum or minimum? Turns out it's the maximum, it's the fastest passing through the equilibrium position. So at x0, you need to put 
this point here and this point here. Last question. What is this shape? Is this a diamond that you draw like this? In physics, there are very rarely a sharp edge graph. Like you see here, got sharp corner, sharp corner. Very rare in physics, you get sharp corners, especially in the physical world. So the answer is no, it is not a diamond shape. The big hint actually lies in this equation. What is the shape of this graph? Ah, huh, never see before. Let me see. Uh, wait a second. Let me rearrange this a little bit. So this can be rewritten as V over omega. Then what? Ah, uh? huh? why want to re over omega? Okay, okay, never mind. We, we use a different method. Let's remove the square root first because the square root makes me very scared. Okay, we remove square root. Square everything. Omega square, A square, X square. And oh, this looks oh, this looks kind of familiar. I can write this as v square over omega square equals to a square minus x square. Or I can shrink it this way v square plus x square equals to a square. And if you cannot recognize this shape, maybe if you take maths, you say, Miss, this kind of looks like equation of a circle. Kind of. x square plus y square equals to radius. It's kind of, but except that you have this omega here, which means it's not going to be a perfect circle. It's going to be like a little bit of a ellipse, an oval shape. So let's try to draw that all curves. And kind of looking something like this, it's a pretty nice circle in this case, but don't forget it can be an ellipse. So you stretch the circle, it becomes a bit long in shape. Also can. It depends on the, uh, on each, on the points that you get. So you could get something like this, you get something pretty round. It all represents the relationship between firstly velocity and displacement all based on this equation right there so the two marks here the first one if you draw some kind of circle or ellipse around the origin okay around is in the middle you kind of already get one mark am i blocking the thing can't really tell ah, it's above my head okay one mark for the shape around the origin then the second one is if your thing actually passed through these four correct points then you get your second mark which is your another B1 mark. The correct shape going through these four points. Okay, so that's two marks for this one. So that's all this question. There are actually quite a lot of simple harmonic motion graphs, so make sure you know what each one is for. So if, for example, this one here you can see there are a bunch of graphs on the right side, they're all in terms of time. So see time, time, and down here time, but displacement, velocity, acceleration. On the left side, I should zoom out so you can see everything. Oh, this is better. On the left side, you can see everything is in terms of displacement. So displacement, displacement, displacement. What's the difference? On the right, everything is sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine, cosine, cosine, and sine. <laughs> that's, that's all. All the simple motion is sine, cosine. Is it a sine or cos? All in terms of time. The one that we just draw is the one here, velocity against displacement. As your objects oscillate up and down, you will be going in a circle, though. That tells you the velocity at certain displacement. That's it. Okay, and acceleration. Does now we talk about a proportional to x? That's your straight line graph right here, and you're just moving back and forth on that graph. For this one, you're just going in circles around the graph. For the others, in terms of time, it's like you're plotting a graph. Oh? You go on in time. You take video and you find the displacement as you go along in time of the charts. Okay, so that's all for this question. Hopefully that was helpful in helping you revise oscillations a bit. But I'll see you in the next one.